Yasodhara Patanjali is a self-taught artist, grew up in London. Now she resides in Sri Lanka and has created Sri Lanka's largest hand-painted mural. We now join with Yasodhara in Colombo. Yasodhara, you have created this 17 feet wide, 64 feet long hand-painted mural. What yeah. was the motivation behind in creating this mural? Um, yeah, so I get asked this a lot because everyone thinks that there must be um, a meaning or like a, that I must have had like a great big plan behind doing the wall. But basically what happened was that um, firstly, since I was a child, I paint like everything that I can get my hands on, whether it's my study books or bits of furniture to toys to literally everything I can get my hands on and that I'm allowed to paint that I have painted that since I was a small kid I've been like that so for me this so the wall is on the road side of my house it's the boundary wall of our house and so every day coming through the gate seeing the empty space it was starting to kind of form in my head that wouldn't it be nice if I just painted it and um, but when I actually asked my other half, you know, and I kind of floated the idea, um, shall I just go and paint it? I didn't really think that he'll say yes um, or anything like that. So I just kind of said it. And then immediately, no hesitation, he said, yeah, let's let's ha let's paint it. Why don't you go and do that? And then I realized, oh, my gosh, this is something that I need to do. This is something I'm actually going to do. Um and again, there was, uh, with anyhow, with all of my artworks, there's like not, no real planning that happens. I kind of, um, for me, that instinctive reaction to the piece that I'm working with is really important. So the, with the wall, it was the same. Uh, we just bought the colors and then I just went for it. Um, yeah, so there was no like great big plan. It's just kind of me trying to paint everything that I can touch sort of thing. Um, I'm really glad I did it though. We know you are an artist, but at the same time, you have done a children's book. Can you tell us about that? Um, so actually, when about so I've been painting my whole life, but not seriously. Um, and about uh, four years ago, I decided that um, you know, I had been in real estate and I'd been a civil servant in the UK and all those, like I had very corporate, boring jobs before. Um, and so when I decided that I was going to become an artist, I think part of it, um, so the, the Tikiri Baba book was one of my first things that I did as a full-time artist. Um, that came about partly because I was painting a lot. So I was starting out on this journey uh, as an artist and I was painting a lot. And um, and I had two young daughters. I mean, at the time, they were very young. I think they were about four and one or something. And um, in so my children um, can read and write Singhala. And um, other than buying Sibyl Vetta Singha's books um, from Sri Lanka, um, there are no other sort of hand-drawn, um, creative Singhala books um, out there. They're, they're, it's all like this digital art and all this kind of stuff, which I really, really don't like. And um, so it was a reaction to that is that I felt like my children didn't have a book that I could buy them after I had bought all of Sibilanti's books. And um, so I thought I'll just go and, you know, if there's no book, I'll go and make a book. Um, and yeah, and then it turned out that Gunasena went on and published it and uh, so now I have the second book as well um, going through the publication process. So um, I, I don't know whether I'll do any more. I think I might actually because it's been a lot of fun and it gives me a lot of scope to um, create something new for, for children in Sri Lanka. Uh, your artwork is uh, not only limited to paint but also into fabrics and wood. Could you share more about your creative activities? So, uh, um, so as I mentioned with, with the wall, I, I, since I was very young, I've had this thing about painting literally what I can get my hands on. So, if, like 
now at at the right at the moment as an artist i i do talk about my fabric work and my next um, exhibition will have um these wooden pieces that i i i'm working on at the moment um but that's i that's not to say that that's all i've done so far i've painted on glass i've painted pottery i've done anything anything that i can paint um if the if it's a surface i i tend to anyway from childhood i've always wanted to paint everything i can get my hands on and uh, so one of the projects that i really want to do in the future is i want to buy a tuk tuk and paint that um so i'm i don't feel like i have ever been limited by um my mediums i kind of i want to spread color everywhere and um wacky cap colors at that so whatever wherever i can find the opportunity to to do that i'll do it Uh, yes odara is it possible for our viewers to see the mural on your wall um uh, with a brief description yeah so let me go outside so the wall so the wall is right behind me it's so bright that i can hardly actually see the phone now um it the wall is about 100 square meters in uh, size about 5 meters around 5 meters high and 20 meters um, long um and it's yeah it's pretty huge um can you see now this is my everyone asks me what my favorite part is but um it's hard for me to pick one but i definitely the bird has to be kind of something that i really really love it's one of my favorite parts of this wall and um so yesterday i had somebody describe um the wall as an undersea brought to land type of landscape i think that's because the the this all these dots that i put but now the dots are in almost all of my work i love putting dots in things uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it's undersea but it's something that i really really love um but there is i think i think there is a sort of a flowiness um to what i've done that people think of under this um i love this big red flower here as well something that i really really love um trying to, it's so bright it's early morning here um then i've gone and planted all these crazy wild plants all over the bottom of the wall just to create that um, extra um wilderness i call this my fantasy wilderness actually and um sometimes people don't understand just how much time it takes to do something like this so i don't know how clearly you can see but there's um, this grass all the way along the wall at at the um on the bottom and that alone took me over 15 hours to paint um so overall the wall took about a month month of painting i had to put a double sca- double story scaffolding and that was really tough because i i have vertigo and even sort of um like going up the stairs in my house is a bit of a tricky thing for me so to live 17 feet high up there and <laughs> um go up and down this top story scaffolding every day that was really really tough actually the vertigo ended up being me about a week of delay because i just couldn't kind of make up my mind to get up there so i so part of partly for me get going up there and painting up there and spending time up there and actually like not conquering the vertigo but facing it was a really really huge achievement it's something that i that's really really important for me So yeah so this is the this is the this is the famous wall that no one can find <laughs>